You're watching Morning at NTV. Thank you for staying with us. I am Malaki Velodera with Romeo Busiku and this is Morning at NTV. This year, the Uganda National Bureau of Standards opened the UNBS National Food Safety Laboratory building. The new center, which boasts immense testing capacity, is set to test samples for Ugandan exports, support businesses, and boost trade activities. But this comes at a time when UNBS has closed numerous establishments over standards, begging the question, is the lab all but a drop in the ocean of quality assurance challenges. Now, in studios today, we have Mr. Joseph Mary Tumanyane, a quality control expert. Of course, he'll help us understand this particular space, especially for you who's looking into getting into the exports of food products right here in the country, out to other countries. So, welcome, sir. Thank you. Always <laughs> a pleasure to have you. Nice to meet you. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning to you. Now, Mr. Joseph, this lab, do you think it's enough to address all the quality assurance challenges that we've been currently grappling with? Yes, to a certain extent, yes, mm. because it is one big lab mm. which has been set up to monitor much of the productions that we have in Uganda. Mm. Well, the capacity is small for me. It is centered in the central. Indeed. Products are done from the north to the east, mm. the central to the west. So we think they need to build more capacity mm -hmm. to have more labs, which are regional centered. Because if you imagine a product is made in Kabare or Guru, mm -hmm. and the problem has to happen, it has to be shipped, shipped to Kampala. So when and how do you intend to do that? So uh, we need to think about how funds are available. Mm -hmm. But as a person who is in charge of quality and uh, a knowledge about products, we need to understand what this produce, uh, product is all about. Okay. Much of us don't read. Right. about what is on the product. Mm. So sometimes the, the issues of food safety go with the knowledge and skill. Mm -hmm. yes. Where do you put us as a country in terms of you know, food safety and taking this space seriously? We've been having issues of food poisoning in many hotels, big hotels, big restaurants. And personally, I'm sure you've all had this experience, whereby you walk into a supermarket, I won't give names, but I've had this yes, experience, yes. and you go to certain sections, and the smell. True. So where would you put us at, and what should you say in terms of that gap in monitoring the quality assurance of food? Is UNBS sleeping at the job? UNBS is not sleeping. Quality assurance and food safety is mm -hmm. each person's mandate. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. It starts with us. Mm -hmm. And UNBS as a body, it's just a, a, a legislative body, mm -hmm. which comes and tells you you have done it wrong. Mm -hmm. but Therefore, it does the quality control. Yes. It does not mm -hmm. do the quality assurance. Mm -hmm. So are okay? you saying that I, as a customer, when getting into this particular establishment or supermarket, and I go to this section, and there's a foul smell, what I have it? the responsibility yes. to call them out. Yes. But if at all I do that and nothing is taken up, where do I go? Of course, that is when we call in the bodies. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you have done your work. And at the end of the day, if this person does not comply, he's not going to sell. Mm -hmm. He's going to lose business. So we look at food safety in totality mm -hmm. as a, a, a means to make sure that the product is safe. Mm -hmm. And what makes it safe? The processes it is handled through, mm -hmm. the storage, the transportation. So by the fact that you got a false, uh, false mail in, a, in an area, something went wrong with the storage and handling. So the product was decomposing, mm -hmm. and it puts a risk. And when you look at statistics, I think which were raised in, in, in 2019, something 2012, mm -hmm. it was putting us at 14% of all illnesses it's for, it's for food. Mm. And therefore, we need to do, to do a lot. It has an impact on the economy, impact on the people. Death has happened due to food poisoning, mm -hmm. as we've said. If you remember the issue of the, the Mera 9 in China, yes, you know the alcohol that we got uh, some recent years here in Uganda, mm -hmm. the anthrax that has been happening in the people, all mm -hmm. this happened because something has to be done, something has been omitted in a system. Mm. Let's talk about the quality control issue, especially when it comes to the exports. A uh, lot of milk merchandise was um, uh, confiscated on the January 2nd, January 7th, and January 11th last month. Now, many exports came out to say, why did Kenya actually seize this merchandise if it had been cleared by UNBS? 
So that brings in uh, Malan's question. Is UNBA sleeping on the job? It's not. And uh, all, all the standards of, of date, we have East African standards. Mm. The, we are, the, the Ugandans are integrating so that I can find my products the in East African Kenya. Customs Union, uh, Customs Union Protocol, you're talking about that? Yes, so no, even the standards here, the UNBA standards, mm -hmm. cut across our mm -hmm. products. Okay. If a product is produced in Kenya, produced in Uganda, it, sh it should comply with all the standards. Mm -hmm. Main that this could have been an issue of some something they didn't agree upon. Mm. It couldn't have been a court control issue. Mm. Because court control, that means it does not meet the mm. requirement. Mm. And that's why it is held mm. and questioned. Mm -hmm. But if it meets the requirement and you can prove the certificate, that's why the product must be shipped, the certificate of analysis or certificate of conformance. Mm. Mm. So that person can read and say, yeah, if the parameters have been met, the product is safe. So oh. main, mm -hmm. main that there could be something could have happened with the transportation. Mm -hmm. In the other handling after the production. Mm -hmm. So the product is safe from product from production, but probably the production was poor. Mm -hmm. The question will say it should be refrigerated at 80 degrees, you are putting at 25 because you can't mm -hmm. manage the cooler. Mm -hmm. So that can bring a compromise. So if you get a National Bureau of Standards is focused on quality control, who is focusing on quality assurance? The producer. And who is uh, actually <laughs> overseeing the, <laughs> the, the activities of the producer? That would be yes. the National uh, Food Safety Act of 1964, which was the National Drug and Food Safety Act, 1964. But yes. then in 19 th uh, 1993, the drug was om omitted mm -hmm. and we created the National Drug Authority, which left the food aspect hanging. So could you please expound on that issue? So, uh, the when food safety. Uh, yeah, when I look at the food safety, it's, it entails a whole of process from the way it was handled, processed, packaged, and then transported to the consumer. Mm -hmm. So much of the mandate is on to the producer mm -hmm. who is making the food. Mm -hmm. And, and at, the, at the time, most of the investors we have are not really looking into putting the right people, the right technical people into that process mm -hmm. because it's all about funds. Mm -hmm. And they end up pro, uh, training, putting people on the streets, give them tips for the day put them in the system, and they produce. Mm -hmm. So when anything goes wrong, goes wrong in this process, mm -hmm. nobody can troubleshoot. Mm -hmm. Nobody can give an answer because of the skill and the knowledge about Do the Do you product. think we need to implement the Food Safety Act so that we can rein in on such producers? We need, to, we, when, even when UNBS is going around, mm. should ask who is technical in this. Mm. If you have a bakery, who looks at the quality control in the bakery? Mm. Who knows the right ingredients have been used? If you are making milk, who tests your platform tests? Who does it? Is it a person you picked from Essex and trained mm -hmm. him? Yes. Is it a, a food uh, a, a qualified person from, from uh, a university? So the, the, the part of the skill with our investors are ignoring it. Okay. They're looking at low quality people they can give some handy and they compromise at the end of the day. And the cost comes back to part, part of the government, mm. to the human beings who are consuming it. Because if, if you produce and you don't sell, it's a whole big chain of loss. But, but if, it's, if it's that whole chain of loss, and I'm uh, just looking at this particular equation, because yes. you can't say that it's, it's, it's without corruption conversations. You know? uh, we won't get into that, but if we are to fight this thing, yes, true. where do we start? True. We can't say the honors is on the producers, because as a producer, this is a business person who's looking on minimizing on the costs and maximizing on the profits. So well, how are we going to crack and this? The, and, the, and the court can never be compromised. Mm -hmm. If you look at compromising, if you look at minimizing the cost and you compromise quality, it hits you back. Mm -hmm. So what we are looking at, yes, the elements of corruption. I may be thinking one, one or two coming up because I don't know if I come to, to shut you down mm. and probably you're looking at a loss of business of a day of around thousands of millions and uh, I earn, let's say, probably two millions in a month and someone tipped by 10 million. He comes back and opens you to cooperate. Yes. But at the end of the day, integrity is not there. Mm -hmm. Okay? Integrity is not Yes. There. So if you lose integrity at the job, much as you go to sit and say, yes, I have, I have earned 10 million on the cost of someone. Mm -hmm. On the cost of someone who's going to take this bread which is listed. On the cost of government. Right. Because you have to look for medicine to treat these people. Right. So all these costs come back. If, 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 if the job of the supervisor is not done right, mm -hmm. it comes back to us. So the onus is on who? Government? The onus is on the employer who is at the same time employing and paying less mm -hmm. with government. Okay. Okay? All because right. when I'm paid well, I don't want to lose a job of 10 million. I, go, I can't. Even if I'm, I'm paid uh, 5 million, but I know 5 million, two months, I have my 10 million. You give How me today and I lose my job. What about the private players? Yes, it, 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 it's, it, 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 it sees all the private and the government people. Because the, the, the UNBS is a government 
uh, entity yes. mm -hmm. oversees everyone, both in private and government. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the private people, much of, much of, much of the work is, the, the little they pay, mm -hmm. they don't care about how much you take home. Mm -hmm. As you said, I care about how much I reap in my business. So UNBS, the onus is on UNBS to make sure that some of these things are checked. Yes, when it comes to me, as it's, I'm assuming I have a bakery, I'm assuming I have a milk plant, I'm assuming I have a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, must, they must look at who is responsible for the processes. Mm -hmm. Because most of the directors, the managers, yes, they have done courses that don't look at these standards. Mm -hmm. Even if you read for him, the standard doesn't understand it. Mm -hmm. Until you get somebody who has the knowledge about the interpret the standard. Mm, yeah. And that, that knowledge goes with the people who have studied. Mr. Mr. Joseph, are you, do you think we are dealing with this issue of low quality produce because we lack a strong ordinance of, on food safety? Keep in mind, the 1964 Food Safety Act, yeah. it actually compels the creation of a task force to go out there seeking people who are operating in those eating places that are not at par when it comes to sanitation. Mm -hmm. yes. But then it's not calling for new div uh, technological advancements like the contaminants, like the additives. It's not uh, mm -hmm. talking about that. So do you think the problem is uh, 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 a weak ordinance on food safety? I think we need a lot of training and, uh, and, uh, and uh, communication to the public about these standards. Mm. These standards are available. They don't reach the people. Mm. So when I, when, when I find UNBS uh, in the market, if you come to close me, do I know why you're closing me? Because the reason was, before it was yes. produce, mm. access the market, mm. then certify. Mm. So they changed Today you should certify mm. before you reach the market. So I don't know if the universe has the capacity to know who is opening where mm. and what. And that's why we, we were calling for the, uh, for the uh, creation of a stronger ordinance on uh, health safety. Yes. Maybe overhaul the we whole need. 1964 Health Safety Act. Is we it need. feasible? What, what I think it's all about budget and funds. Mm. If we have the capacity, as I said, to have a unit of UNBS in, in in northern region mm. as uh, and i think some of them have been opened but the capacity is small mm. because if if we have let's say uh, the president was talking about our 700,000 industries that have been set up and we don't have do we have 700 workers in UNBS mm. at least we attach a number let's say let's say 200 people we attach a number to certain region so that you can monitor supervise and ensure that these standards have been implemented mm. okay so that's where the gap is yes you know i want us i want you to bring us up to speed with what happened to this case? Just a few days ago in the newspapers, we did have this big headline and it, it made rounds on social media. Yes. Standards <laughs> body closes 15 bakeries over yes. poor hygiene. Yes. Around mega supermarket. <laughs> we are not calling names. Some, <laughs> some of them. It was already in the dailies. <laughs> yes, it's, it's out you in know, the public, yeah. some social media. What's the effect then? If we're lacking ordinances that to mm. check this completely, what happened um, to this story? And, uh, Did it die and, and uh, we forgot and moved on? What happened? And Because uh, personally, I'll tell you this, sorry for cutting you short, mm. um, some of the supermarkets that are named, I have gone there, uh, of course, our journalism yes. spirit, and Me they're too. operating mm. as usual. Yes. Um, when, when they come, depending on the, on the conditions of closure, yeah. they, may, they may warn you and let you operate. If it's something you can easily, if it's a point of to do hygiene and cleaning, you can either fix it immediately and they open you the, immediately as you fix it. Mm -hmm. Depending on the, on the compost, if it's too big, that probably your equipment is rusty, your equipment is in a very bad state, your people are not clean, the state so they can close you until you close those findings and inform them that I have got probably a new machine, I've requested a part. Sometimes people use bakeries of the products which are not food grade, the materials they use for the, the trays for the, the, for the cakes and the, and the breads. So when they are closed, um, and, uh, and some of these, of these uh, supermarkets are certified. Right. That's what is funny. Right. Mm. But the controls, the quality assurance uh, systems inside there are not monitored. Mm -hmm. The people they are employing are not trained. I, I, I happened to train some of the one of those back that was closed, I think, some week ago to see what was the problem. And we found the issue was about people's knowledge, about what they're handling, the risk of what they're handling. Because I, I bread, mm. what we call the quarter control uh, points and the critical limits, mm. when bread is out of the bakery, mm -hmm. of, the, of the oven, anything that happens to that will endanger it. There is no any other you can uh, count, uh, count and say, after this, we can sanitize. After this, we can sterilize. Mm -hmm. So if, yeah, if somebody who is going to, because uh, the bread is, is sliced, mm -hmm. when they are slicing, they are handling the hands. The machines they use for slicing, mm -hmm. the, the packages they are using for putting in bread. So if anything happens, 
if it is contaminated, probably somebody has a bacteria mm. or a virus and it touches it, it ends into the client's mouth. Mr. Joseph, would you attribute the low penetration of our exports to the outside world to the poor and low quality assurance in Uganda? Yeah, yeah, to, to that one is a pity because when you produce a low, a low quality product mm. and it is graded and probably find it is, a, it is because what we, what we look at is if the quality is okay, mm. then the market is going to be exposed. Mm. Mm. But if they test and they find the quality control coming and find it is lacking, mm -hmm. probably milk should be, let's say, 3.2 fat content mm. and your milk is full. You're not removing the fat. And you know, for us, we're using, we're consuming low fat content. Mm. Your product is not going to go. Mm -hmm. But the reason is, part of it is about technology and money. Mm. Because investing in some of these technologies involve money. So we compromise on the issues of the quality because we can't afford some of the technologies. It okay. seems like the issue of uh, quality control is not lacking. You get a National Bureau of Standards, you have that in check. Now the issue is quality assurance. Sure. How do you plan to make that happen? Um, as a, a team, mm. the people have uh, visited to ensure that the, the people must be trained mm. who are going to handle. People must have this, the right facilities. We are going to make sure that the product, the, the product is going to produce. Mm. We also look at the program like IPM, Integrated Pest Management, if you are dealing with food. Mm. It must be implemented. Some of the things that come in, the venoms uh, that happen to, to, be, to be poisoning our food come have vectors mm. which hide in the structures. Mm which had in the people's knowledge, they know he has put on something, he visits the toilets, he comes back, he doesn't clean. So the lack of that knowledge, much as you may have the technology, mm. the skill that is missing there, the resources that you may need to inject to make sure the product is okay, yes. is what we need to give to everyone, to train them and ensure that they are implemented on the ground. Where is the heaviest burden? Is it, because uh, the example you've just given <sighs> right now, it's not a skill issue, that's a... Uh, Carelessness and negligence conversation. It's an yeah. issue right there. And I think it, it, it goes deep into the hearts of hearts of this particular individual. So where's the hardest burden when I you're I interacting I with some of these I people? I still find, I, as I was, I was usual move, we can tell you that you see when you're handling a product, like you're not supposed to have rings, you're not supposed to have gels, you're not supposed to put on makeups, a yeah. lot of hair. So those nitty gritties that you're supposed to ensure, you go to the floor and you see what happens. Yes. Somebody says, what's wrong with my ring? Mm -hmm. No, but this ring can peel off. As you are caking up, some of the products are going to end up in my product. So I still have to to lack of that knowledge and training. And, 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 and monitoring. And monitoring. And that because monitoring. Because that's the cream of it yes. all. Yes. Somebody's, somebody's even paid to do the monitoring. Yes. To do mm -hmm. the records. Because in, in quality control and quality assurance, if you don't make a record, mm -hmm. it is nothing proven done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Joseph, what are some of the technolo technological advancements that have made quality control and quality assurance very hard at the Uganda National Bureau of Standards? Um, uh, looking at, of course, the cost of equipment, mm. most of these equipments that are supposed to be the quality controls mm. are very expensive. Mm. Mm -hmm. if, if you have to in, in, invest at like, like the issue of uh, alcohol, the issue of uh, this, this, this anthrax, they mm. have to get the samples, take them and analyze them. All right. So if you don't have the right equipment to do it, okay. you're out. All right. I do understand that we do have to link to Mr. Stephen Bide. Um, he has something special that, of course, we'll be coming back to have our conversation and continue the conversation right here. Stephen Bide, good morning. Give us the latest. What's happening on ground? Yes, good morning, Romeo. Good morning, Romeo. Right now, I'm at the Buganda Road, just heading towards the CPS. I'm here with some graduate, fresh graduates from Makai University and Makai University Business School. These guys have been staging a peaceful protest around the Tanan Avenue roundabout, just next to the Shell and Rensselaer Coast. But police had come, has come in to intercept, intercept them. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Why are you protesting this this very morning? What's your name? Police is arresting them and taking them towards the CPS. Uh, to uh, they've been ho holding a peaceful protest around the Rainsor Coast, around about there, just next to Shell and Sheraton Hotel. Good morning to you. Morning. Just speak to me. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? My name is Ivan Matthews. Police is arresting you. No, it's I, not. It's mm. not arresting us. They just want to inquire. Mm -hmm. They are not arresting us. Mm -hmm. Yes. What, what are you doing? Why are you protesting? We are here? not protesting. What, so what are we doing? We are just trying out a peaceful, actually it's awareness. It's mm -hmm. not demonstration. Uh -huh. We are not rioting, we are not demonstrating. Mm -hmm. yes. So what are they telling you? They just want to get an, a small, small issue with our letter that we gave them. 
Yeah. Okay. Maybe uh, police can sh uh, we can get uh, the information that is on the placards they have been holding. Um, these are just uh, one one gentleman here and three ladies. They are telling me that uh, they are fresh graduates from Macau University and the other side of Macau University Business School. And uh, tell me, uh, you which course do you offer? I pursued a bachelor's degree in international business. Mm -hmm. mm. Have you tried to look for jobs elsewhere and you yes. failed? No, I've been, I've been applying for jobs. Mm -hmm. mm. And what have you, have you been getting from wherever you've been applying jobs from? Uh, most of the jobs they need experience and yeah, feedback of course. Okay, let me also speak to one young girl here, a fresh graduate from Kelly. Good morning to you. Good morning. Are you afraid now that police has come in to intercept you? At least police now has taken one of the placards from these young people who have been protesting, holding a peaceful protest just around the roundabout of Tannan Avenue next to Renzori Courts and the Sheraton Hotel there. They've been holding these placards showing what next. And police there just has, has just confiscated the placards from them and then is taking them towards the CPS to record a statement on why they've been holding that peaceful protest. This is what is happening here in Kampala. I'm taking you back to Romeo in the studios. But for now, the four fresh graduates from Macau University who have been protesting peacefully have been arrested and taken to CPS. Stephen Bide here on the ground. Thank you very much, Stephen Bide, for that update. And of course, we shall continue to monitor those events and bring you more details in our subsequent news bulletin, starting with NTV at one. And I'll be doing you the honors. Now, Mr. Joseph, we are back. And yes. we have been talking about the issue of the technological advancements that might be giving you trouble at the Uganda National Bureau of Standards. Help us break them down. So as we said, the, the cost of the technology, also, of course, the skills of the people, they have to train the people. Mm. When you bring these technologies, you have to go and train the people and how to manage them. Mm. We have to do uh, how to, how do we do we sample, how do we get the samples from the market, mm -hmm. how do we transport them to the laboratories. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the infrastructure was also an issue. Now they have put up the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So we feel now we can handle, mm. the UMS can handle, okay. as we also, as a team outside there, see what uh, uh, the public is, is doing. All mm -hmm. right. You know, I was looking at uh, some information right here, of course, courtesy yes, of yes. the Uganda um, National Bureau of Standards, and they were saying that selling uncertified foodstuffs is criminal. Anyone found liable will be set aside to pay a fine of 500 currency points. When you, of course, translate that, that's about 10 million Uganda shillings. And they're saying don't be caught on the wrong side of the law. True. So let's talk about certification of your food products, especially them that are in this particular space. Mm -hmm. yes. What does it take? What's the process? Ah, the process is a simple one to the one who understands it. Because what, when you start thinking about the product, mm -hmm. think about how it will be a good product and safe. So UNBS has a system where you apply online, you open an account on their website, and then put in your identities. Of course, now these bodies are working together, UNBS, URSB, so your product must be registered. Then you go through the application. After they have received the application, the, you must know which standard you're going to, to certify your product in. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know the standard, the application, will, will, they will ask you which product you want to certify under which standard. Then they will guide you. So after that, they will write, they will write to you the email communication mm -hmm. on when the, the requirement of your certification mm -hmm. okay. in terms of cost of visiting and sampling of your product, then they will schedule on a, on a, a visit. So how much are you looking at roughly for the entire process? Um, depending on the products and the brands, mm -hmm. if it's one product, one brand, um, depending on even on the recursion, but within Kampala, the audit, the audit fees are uh, around 250,000. Okay. All right. Then the analysis cost of your sample depends. Mm -hmm. the, the, the scope of the analysis are going to look at in your product. Okay. But to look at roughly something to do with 500 plus. Yeah. Romeo. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, that is a, that think, certification think, we yes. have not reached at the permit level. You know, so it's so. it's an entire <laughs> process, and I think, yes. like you have stipulated it, I think it's 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 quite a procedure, but it's a warranted one, especially yes. given this particular yes. mandate and the consequences mm -hmm. that you you will face if uh, found selling foods that are not certified. Mm -hmm. However, again, to the question and the conversation of supermarkets, mm -hmm. you and I have gone to supermarkets seen products on the shelves that don't have the UNBS yes. standard quality mark. mark. True. So is it rocket science that nubbing some of these 
produces becomes a hard tussle, a hard task for the monitoring body? What exactly is it? I because think, especially uh, for us as uh, the consumers, thank you, thank you. the products we love, and uh, personally yeah, there's a product I love, doesn't yeah. have that mark. that mark, but you still have in to comparison to the others, you're like, let me just get it. And, and, and keep in mind, Mr. Joseph, yes. some of these supermarkets are also selling expired goods. Yes. You'll yeah. find an expired goods still on the shelf, and it will be you the customer to Look take it, it to yeah, yeah it will be you the customer to get the product take it to the uh, cashier whoever is at the at the, at the counter, the counter and yeah. tell them hey this product is expired and it's uh, yeah, so then they will they will act surprised like hey we did not know yeah, that, that is the in-house <laughs> problem now about the supervision and the checks supervision uh, about, and yeah the checks. within the, within because if you are supposed to have product you're supposed to do a lot of merchandising you come and put the the old ones probably in front the new ones so you're telling them to so police themselves inside as i said food safety still has to work with you the oh, consumer okay. with everyone's mandate you have to make sure the product is right whether it is for your skin whether it is for for your for your stomach then coming back to what you, you asked about certification i mm. think even UNBEST has to do a lot mm. because if i go into the house of certification and i'm going to pay let's say a million plus for my product and i have a competitor who is selling an certified product i don't find it going yes so they have to do a lot and it's also cost wise if they're going to pull out all the things in the supermarket they need money mm. they need money even the supermarket person needs money to sell so they wrote a letter if you check on that uh, yes they wrote it that also last year all supermarket to stop receiving uh uncertified uh products mm. that they're not complying they are not complying mm. so i think it's all attached to cost if they're going to run around within a thousand supermarkets in kampala right. alone they may not manage. Okay, so That's why they just hold them on the road when they want supply. Yeah. They put those roadblocks yeah. and they get you there and they put you. Okay. Land. Rumi, if you allow me, because we all want to learn today. <laughs> yes. So if I'm to go to any, any outlet and procure yes. anything, as a consumer, as an educated consumer, looking out for my health and that of my family mm. or the people who are going mm. to consume this product, what should I look out for? It's well packaged, yes. everything is in check. What should I look out for? Um, for now, if it's not it, if it's not satisfied, look at the best before or expiry date. Mm -hmm. When was it produced? When, when where is the shelf life? Look at the storage conditions. Storage conditions. Yes. I've had issues people talk about I carried my milk in the morning, it was bad. There is milk written on store in the fridge if and you've seen there degree yes, delicious. if you just put it at room temperature because what happens in some of the milks it's they just give a shock to the bacteria and the viruses which are there by the temperature uh, uh, lowering or temperature raising so if you don't put it at room temperature they're going to wake up they won't have the food because this milk and the other products are foods for anything that's why they also find them there so look at those the the, the conditions of storage how is it displayed Sometimes even find data marks around it. Mm -hmm. You have found cobwebs around these things. Those, these are all these are vectors that can take. You have found cockroaches running around the storage areas. Yeah. Avoid such things. Okay. Make sure the prices are mm -hmm. hygienic. The people are going to serve you are hygienic. You, you, you eat this way to eat food in the supermarket. So you are hungry. You just running. Yeah. Somebody is going to serve you, and you see his nails. Yeah. <laughs> you see the dirt I'm telling around you. you. Yes. So you, you, the conscience is like, is it right? Mm -hmm. Is it safe? So don't wait for NBS. You can also sound start, the alarm start, as a consumer. Start, start, yes. Well, I've enjoyed this conversation for the last 30 minutes and we still have a little bit like four minutes mm -hmm. to wrap up. And uh, what I've learned from this conversation, Mr. Joseph, if, you, if you'll allow me, I can tell you verifiably that uh, we need to overhaul the 1964 Food Safety Act. In that, the UNBS uh, organization, you have the issue of quality control in check. But yes. there's one missing gap, the issue of quality assurance, assurance. to rein in on the producers. You agree. Yes. And we also have a conversation that is simmering within the corners, the issue of the East African integration. Now, mm. let's say we unite in the near future. Will we be still talking about UNBS as the organization that mm. uh, assures a quality control and uh, quality assurance? Or shall we be talking about the creation of a new organization as a whole to handle quality control in Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania? In the East African um, region, they haven't integrated their bodies. They have integrated the standards. Mm -hmm. So the UN base will remain a, a Ugandan one. Then the KBA Uganda, the KBS, Won't that create KBS a lot will remain of the Kenyan. Because I've been thinking yes. about that conversation uh, no. <laughs> over the weekend, <laughs> no, and I'm like, if you have UNBS in Uganda handling yes. their own quality control, you have the Kenyans and the Tanzanians. Won't that create a rift? Don't we have to harmonize and come up with one single quality control mechanism? The the the, the, the good one is that the, the standards are harmonized. 
Mm -hmm. So when it stands harmonized to whether I'm in Tanzania, I'm in Uganda, mm -hmm. it will still be, we only need a body to check. Because I'm trying to do away with issues like what happened to lateral milk. With when Kenyans said, okay, according to our standards, we cannot allow such milk to cross our border. And the mm -hmm. Ugandans on the other side, they were saying, no, 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 no. According to our checks, this milk is at par. So to do away with such issues, don't you think we have to create one uniform body? It will, still be, uh, it will still be created. Because now these bodies meet. Mm -hmm. different, uh, there are different bodies of different standards. Mm -hmm. and different committees meet mm -hmm. to harmonize some of these standards. Mm -hmm. If there is any change, mm -hmm. they will first meet and agree. And mm -hmm. then they put it even to public uh, opinion. Okay. We are mm -hmm. coming up to these standards. Mm -hmm. Is it right? Mm -hmm. When they all agree, then they go look at the... the, the contributions that have been made, they come to the Senate. Okay, so we are going to wrap up right about now, Mr. Joseph, but uh, you can give us a, a, a few quick pointers we can go, go away with as yes. we wrap up this interview. So as, uh, as I said, as we, we wrap up, food mm -hmm. safety is a mandate of everyone. Ensure that the product is in a safe place, transported in the same way, mm -hmm. with the right people, even at home. Mm -hmm. Make sure that the utensils you are going to use are clean. Right. There is what you call the clean in every step and sanitize. Make sure your hands are, are clean. And the, the outside like catering services? They are supposed to have that standard, I said. Some mm -hmm. of people don't want these outside catering services have a standard. Yes. Mm -hmm. Those ones who give food in mm -hmm. a very big group, they yeah. are standard yeah. but who knows about it? Mm -hmm. No. Way. Probably, of course, universe do its work. <laughs> Since yeah. the public comes to some of these uh, media houses and the print uh, media and give us enough information. Because Mala, we might be having a party at the Serena, but the food is being prepared in Bonga. So we don't know during the transportation uh, uh, procedure there yeah. whether or not the food will be contaminated. Yeah. So right. you've had it from Mr. Joseph. Thank you very much. We've been Thank talking you. about food Thank safety so in the Thank country. Okay. Let's take a very short break. We'll be right back with your birthdays. Don't move away.